Yes, as the moon comes over the mountain, it's time for another exciting episode of Poet the Poet. And I'm Robert Dunn and uh, the man in the moon, and uh, among other things. And uh, I present to you two, well, they're not lunar guests, but they are stellar guests. Uh, we have all the way from uh, Hungary, we have Gabor over here. And in the far corner, in the red and white tights, we have Jay Chalik. Poet, artist, Lord knows what else. <laughs> he has quite a past to him. Uh, he was born in October 1994. Uh, born the poetry, he says, that is. Uh, let's see, and uh, went in the deep end of the pool and came up here, for which we are profoundly grateful. Um, he spent many years uh, in the visual arts trade. As a matter of fact, He's gone so far as to draw a few pictures for our magazine, Medicinal Purposes. Uh, they're kind of small, and I can't show them to you on the air, so you're just going to have to get a copy of the magazine, which would please us no end, too, as well as Jay. Uh, let's see. Starting with a strange incident in August 94, he succumbed totally to the poet's call. Yes, when my wife and I were on a visit to our family in England, mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, uh, we had spent quite a bit of time with an elderly uh, aunt of my uh, wife's mm -hmm. and uh, who fancies herself a poet. And she is, her poets are very gentle and sweet. Mm -hmm. Anyway, when we got back, she sent us a, a poem commemorating, a commemorative kind of poem. Mm -hmm. uh, and my wife said, well, you really should answer her. And of course, prodding me <laughs> for, for quite a few weeks, I finally succumbed and I managed to eke this my first poem out, and from then on the floodgates opened, and uh, that's all I've been doing. And then your aunt wrote back and said that what she was really hoping for was cash. <laughs> and she never wrote back. <laughs> ah, you know, the same thing happened with my relatives, I tell you. Anyway, uh, before we get too deeply into this uh, reminiscence here, how about a poem? Okay, I'll read the first poem. This is the homage to Teresa Pollen, who is my wife's aunt. Ah. Teresa Pollen's honeyed rhyme spanned ocean deep in record time to lodge within our hearts and glow, thanks to TP's art, although she says her rhyme is not so very good or smoothly tributary, and roughly falls upon the ear. Stop, stop, we say, Teresa dear. Your singing lines have touched upon the time we spent with Oxford Don and chronicled our hot pursuit of London culture's ancient root, and gay Paris whose splendid space we traced with Shakespeare's petty pace. But best of all, your graceful lines have sweetly burnished till it shines the time we spent in varied place with all of you, our fond embrace. For memories that forever claim the special place that has no name, where USA and England meet in heartfelt words so kind so sweet. Ah, that tells me I ought to start traveling again. <laughs> uh, a decision that I know will cheer up the crew. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they've been giving me the business lately. Uh, tell us, uh, do you have any uh, uh, checkered career stories about your visual arts experiences? Well, I was in the visual arts since the time I can remember just picking up a crayon, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, that was prior to 1994, uh -huh. and then poetry took over, and I found that I could, um, in some strange way, mm -hmm. uh, describe things that I was unable to do when mm -hmm. I was either painting, drawing, sculpting, photo photographing, mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, thoughts and political feelings mm -hmm. and all sorts of other things that one is unable to express on canvas or any other way in the other medium. Mm -hmm. And so this has seemed to be a very much expanded way of expressing myself. Aha, uh -huh. did you get to draw on the walls like the rest of us? <laughs> Just on paper. Ah, all right, the, the, the conservative approach. All right, Jay, how about another poem? Okay, and I think for these I'll stand, if you don't okay. mind. This was a series of color poems of which uh, I'll read two or three depending on time. The first is called Yellow. Yellow bright and sun, or harshly sweating through the force of light, sublimity is risen Apollonian. Proclaim the day in beaten golden yellow storming trumpet. The bursting world is cadmium, 
a yellow, thick impasto Van Gogh writhing, and Midas singing gold now hoards the sun. O oh, yellow day, the world's a pissing splendor of delight, but nonetheless the lemon's inexplicable. Who cares? I'll dance the edge of careless like a clown. I'll dream about Rapunzel's hair uncoiling and floating down like gold dust through the air. I'll dart through liquefaction's palace, a goldfish through the water's blur of sound. I'll roam the summer meadow's yellow solace. I'll sift the thinnest wash of gold from rocky, gold-veined ground. I'll hear the yellow song the finch is singing. And I will come around a shaved-head monk to paradise in holy saffron, to simplicity, and to peace beyond all sound. Mm -hmm. Don't move, but tell us, in your visual arts experience, what color do you mix with a yellow poem? <laughs> green. Green, to okay. get this next poem. Mm -hmm. uh, this is called, simply, Green. Before the fall that dooms the winter leafless, and during spring, when tender promised leaves seem hesitant and pale, I yearn for quintessentials. The green and greener, greenest green of summer, the planet's chlorophyll at very least, and all the maples of the world. I want the tilt, the greening sway, the shaggy aspen, to choke on oak its every leaf. I'm greedy for the hemlock and desperate for pine. For beech and birch, the elms' apotheosis, I long to know their secret. The water song's conversion into sweetness. The feeding sun and carbon's air in th synthesis. This green is turned rhapsodic. Each miracle is leaf and shudders. Green epiphany, it's in the mold. And every weed there ever was, it's parrot poison scum on putrid waters. And in the grass, each single blade is green ad infinitum. It canopies the continents, this splendid emerald life, this tambourine of leaves that shakes the green foundations, the tentacles of weeds and all the lawns of summer shake their green, shake free the gaudy banner and singing green hosannas to the frog. Right huge with vibrant joyousness, right viva green. It all goes to prove Kermit was right. It's not easy being green. <laughs> um, Jay, since you passed on to the, from the visual arts to the poetic arts, in the event that you pass on from the poetic arts to another creative endeavor, is it true that you harbor a secret desire to be an Elvis impersonator? <laughs> Why so? Are my hips uh, sort of doing a little dance? Why not? Why not? <laughs> Let's slip in another poem. Another? Do I have okay. another t yeah. uh, time for another yeah. uh, color poem? And then I think so. A, a one-column job. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I don't have any one. Uh, let's read this. Okay. I'll read going from color to food. Mm -hmm. uh, this will either give you an appetite or take it away, and it's called <laughs> Nourishment. All food stuff comes at last to where the mouth is. All bursting bunched and purple juices flowing. All round or bulbous, russet tinged and fruited. All vegetating green in densest packing. All food stuff comes at last to where the mouth is. The grinding, savage teeth. The meaty, thick and bloody basting juices. The slabbed and marbled, sliced and sausage bursting. The wetly mounded chop meat, awful lowing. The yellow, bleeding, raw and glistened poultry. The triple hacked off thighs and breasts and back parts. The spitted, turning, shrink-wrapped, frenzied cluck house. All food stuff comes at last to where the mouth is. The grinding, savage teeth turn all to pulp. To omelets flipped and frying sizzled minutes. To viscous, oozing yolks, hot butter melting. To pack deep churned and tubbed on slathered muffins. To runny cheeses, moldy, stenched, vein blueness. To slither, finned, and ice-eyed, speckled, staring. To moist and flaky, grilled, limp, salt anchovies. To sliced, filleted, and flung alive, red, murdered, boiling. To hooked, pried, open, stunned, and slammed, flat, beaten. 
All food stuff comes at last to where the mouth is. The grinding savage teeth turn all to pulp, to disembodied pulp, in smooth and luscious sweetness overwhelming, in buttercream and layered moist and sumptuous, in drizzle jam smooth torts rise seven layers, in luscious curls of sugar lavished mocha, in candy slathered calorific cream puffs, in gooey double dense and darkest flowing, all food stuff comes at last to where the mouth is. The grinding savage teeth turn all to pulp, to disembodied pulp, then disappearing enzymed into liquid, the sate itself resumes its gluttony. Waiter, check please. <laughs> Jay, I tell you, I'm glad that we filmed this show in color. You've certainly taken full advantage of it. Um, do you have, seriously now, what are your ambitions for the rest of your creative endeavors? Well, to keep, to keep writing, of course, yes. mm -hmm. and hopefully to be published. Mm -hmm. uh, I think maybe this last poem, if, if it will be the last, I don't know what our time constraint is. Mm -hmm. This was my second poem, mm -hmm. and uh, I guess its avowals are earnest and innocent, but I hope I never betray them. Uh, so, if you'd like, I'd read this poem. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have to uh, save it for your return engagement. Oh, okay. But um, we appreciate your coming okay. on and uh, bringing a bit of color to the uh, poet and poet universe here. And um, also, Gabor, uh, we're glad that uh, you were able to drop by. And... Um, I get to throw a few things in. Uh, okay. I'll give you a food poem, if you can stand it. Uh, a nature food poem, as a matter of fact. It's called the turbot. I will explain. The turbot is a European flounder. Its backside is flat, its circumference is rounder. Though many chefs declare the turbot as savory, I consider that idea, idea to be unmitigated knavery, especially when they propose the turbot as the base ingredient in a sherbet. <laughs> It takes, it takes a little getting used to, and uh, I haven't heard from uh, Triolet Trevor in a long time, uh, my friend who specializes in that, and uh, he's popped up again with this little uh, effort. It's called Postage Stamp Blues. I just love licking postage stamps, even if I'm only paying my bills. They taste best in the dark, so douse the lamps. I just love licking postage stamps. They're the only snack. That doesn't give me cramps, though some of the honorees have made me ill. I just love looking postage stamps, even if I'm only paying bills. <laughs> so we've had a wild, wild uh, display of poetry today, which reminds me of one other, uh, one of my own, the barber. The barber holds up his mirror to show me my finished haircut. I like what I see reflected therein better than the reality of my head. And that about wraps it up. I want to thank again Jay Chalik and Gabor and Tony Belize for letting us use the vault here in Queens Village for filming this edition of Poet the Poet. So until next time, this is Robert Dunn saying something or other. <laughs> Arrivederci. <laughs> <laughs>